Tehran, the glittering capital of Iran, prepared itself for a coronation day such as it had never before witnessed. Even the magnificence of its mosques was overshadowed by the spectacular preparations that transformed the city into a wonderland of color befitting the greatest day in the life of the Persian monarch. And so, as night fell on Coronation Eve, four million lights shone in Tehran streets. It was a sign that told the people of the nation that the Shah was at last satisfied that he was worthy of wearing the crown. The day of coronation for the Shah was here. In brilliant sunshine, guests waited in the gardens of the Palace of the Garden of Roses. After 26 years of steering his country from what he described as a nation of beggars into a thriving and prosperous realm, the Shah was ascending the fabled peacock throne to crown himself King of Kings. But 2,000 miles away, a few days later, on a grey October day in London at Buckingham Palace, a British scene of pageantry was re-enacted. For the first time, Prince Charles and Princess Anne set out in the Irish state coach for Westminster with the Queen and Prince Philip. As head of state, Her Majesty was to open a new term of Parliament. proud day it was for the Queen and her husband, and indeed for the nation, to realize that Prince Charles and his sister had reached an age when they could take part in such an important ceremony. Again, the magic created by a royal occasion was so evident, just as it was at Tehran's Palace of the Garden of Roses, as they waited in blazing sunshine for the newly crowned king to make his regal way along the red carpeted roof. The 48-year-old Shah proudly wore the Pahlavi crown, heavy with its 3,380 dollars. Then came his beautiful wife, Queen Farah, the first woman in the 2,500 years of Persian monarchy ever to be crowned. The diadem was encrusted with 1,646 dollars. Queen Farah was magnificent. Almost a fairy tale queen in a fairy tale setting. Her green cape, with its 26 foot train, was edged in white mink. For a little boy who will one day wear the crown of Persia, it was a very long and lonely walk. But seven year old Prince Reza, heir to the throne, knows already of his future role and how he must behave. his guests looked on, the Shah and his queen prepared to show themselves to their people. It was the sign for celebrations to commence as the magnificent gold coach set out to drive through the city. Young Prince Reza followed in his own coach.
through the streets of Tehran drove the Shah and his queen in a coach drawn by four pairs of matched white Hungarian horses. Before the crowd, the Shah was more than a king. He was the man who had achieved a program of social and economic reform unparalleled in the nation's history. They honored him as such. And from a scene of Eastern royal splendor and rejoicing, back to the royal scene in London, which for centuries has been the home of the Mother of Parliament. Preceded by the Imperial State Crown, Her Majesty, for the 14th time during her reign, made the royal journey past thousands of her subjects to the House of Lords, to make her speech to members of both houses and set the wheels of government in motion once more. The magic that is royalty is a universal thing. In Tehran, a king was crowned. In London, a queen performed her duty. <laughs> <laughs> 